tonight. Welcome everyone. Um, my name is Polly Reynolds. Um, I am the head of adult services um, and archives at the Hudson Library. Um, welcome to the Hudson Library's eighth annual pitch night, part of the global entrepreneurship series of events um, in Hudson, a citywide celebration of entrepreneurship that showcases exciting local innovation and strengthens connections. Um, this week, we have organized a number of local events, and I just want to mention a few. This year's Community Read, we do this every year, we choose one book. Um, this year, we have chosen um, The Leader's Guide to Unconscious Bias, How to Reframe Bias, Cultivate Connection, and Create High-Performing Teams by Pamela Fuller. Um, those books are available for purchase from the Learned Owl Bookstore, and we've also purchased multiple copies for checkout from the Hudson Library. So check that out. I believe there's also some ebook versions as well. Um, on Wednesday, November 18th, there will be a Hudson Civic Hack where local high school groups develop a proposal to solve an issue facing the community. I believe they're doing that virtually. And then on Thursday, November 19th at 6 p.m., it's our third annual Teen Tween Pitch Night. Um, and that's um, another Hudson Library event. Um, so that's another exciting um, event that we host during the Global Entrepreneurship Week. Um, I would like to especially thank the Burton D. Morgan Foundation for generously providing the cash prizes for tonight's event, as well as supporting the library's entrepreneurship programs, databases, and print resources. Tonight, we have seven finalists. Um, they are competing for the first place prize of $5,000 and two runners up would, will receive $2,500. We're doing things a little different this year. Um, it's all virtual, as you can see. Um, and we have asked each finalist to pre-record their pitch. We wanted to be sure that we weren't running into technology issues and sound issues this evening. We thought it would be a better idea to, to go with the pre-recording. So we will play each one of you, each one of those recordings, um, they're five minutes. And then following that, each judge or the judges will have approximately three minutes to ask questions to the finalists live. Following all of the pitches, the judges will deliberate in a private Zoom meeting, and then they'll come back and we'll announce the winners. I'm very pleased to introduce our very qualified panel of judges. We're very lucky to have this wonderful group joining us this year. Um, Jim Griggy. Um, he is the business advisor for the Small Business Development Center at the Summit Medina Business Alliance. Kimberly Irvin Lee, MA, CBA, the Senior Director of the Entrepreneurship Empowerment Center at the Akron Urban League. And finally, Rick Schultz, author, inventor, lecturer, and retired Chief Executive Officer of Spectrum Surgical Instruments Corporation. All right. We're ready to start the pitch. The pitch finalist order was randomized and tonight's first pitch is Chelsea Monty, the CEO and founder of RuSense. Take it away, Ryan. Athletic performance is highly dependent upon an athlete replacing electrolytes lost in sweat. Failure to maintain proper electrolyte levels can lead to cramping, dizziness, fatigue, and in extreme circumstances, even death while maintaining proper electrolyte levels can increase performance by up to 40%. This is the difference between a four and a half hour and a sub four hour marathon. RuSense has worked with world leaders in sweat physiology and material development to make it easy to get hydration right. The RuSense Optimal Sweat Performance or OSP band has a disposable fabric sensor integrated into reusable clothing. Unlike our competitors, the sensor can be seamlessly integrated directly into clothing or gear that athletes are already wearing. Data is then sent via Bluetooth to a phone, tablet, or watch app, and our proprietary algorithm categorizes athletes as low, medium, or high sodium sweaters and provides them with an individualized hydration strategy. There are currently many ways to determine your hydration needs. The most rudimentary and most frequently used is simply weighing yourself before and after exercise subtracting your fluid intake and replacing your weight loss with fluids. However, this ignores electrolyte loss entirely and does not allow an athlete to properly maintain their electrolyte levels. The most accurate way to monitor is through laboratory testing. This can involve exercise-based testing that must be done at a specialized lab, and these tests are expensive and hard to locate, or sedentary testing such as the Precision Hydration Sweat Analyzer, where you can determine your resting sweat electrolyte concentration. Beginning to enter the market, 
market are wearable sensors for real-time monitoring of sweat sodium concentration. However, these sensors predict chloride and fat calculate sodium, and this has been shown to have an error up to 15%. Levelin provides mail-in testing for convenience to the user. However, patch tests are notoriously inaccurate as the sweat begins to evaporate as soon as you remove the patch from the skin. The RuSense OSP band is the only sensor about to enter the market that can take the lab-based accuracy of sodium analysis to the convenience of the field. Why now? Well, today's consumer is interested in personalizing every aspect of their lives, so it's no surprise that fitness and hydration are no different. The fitness market has exploded to a $100 billion industry as consumers are actively seeking healthy lifestyles. And the personalized fitness market is expected to grow 35% by 2026. Data analytics is at an all-time high in sports and it's helping teams win. Additionally, the wearables market is predicted to be $150 billion in 2027 with smart textiles, where the RuSense OSP band fits, reaching a $4 billion market in 2021. Initially, our target market will be business-to-business -business sales to hydration supplement manufacturers. Our target customer is any company with a customer base that demands access to sweat sodium sensor testing for analysis and strategy recommendations. Extensive customer interviews have indicated that selling directly to the end user athlete is cost prohibitive with a customer acquisition cost of $25 a sale. Therefore, the most economical way to reach the end user audience is to sell directly to existing hydration supplement manufacturers who already have a reliable method of selling directly to athletes. Customers that meet this description include Levelin, Gatorade, Noon, Infinite, Scratch Labs, and Precision Hydration. In interviews with these companies, we found that they are also actively looking for a product to help their customer optimize their hydration plan because it allows them to almost double the lifetime value of their customer and increase customer satisfaction. For a market analysis, there are 110 million people interested in fitness in the US, and we believe that the RuSense OSP band can help all of them. At a lifetime total value of $250 per customer, that gives us a market of $27.5 billion. When focusing on elite and professional athletes, there are 17.6 million in the U.S. alone. This gives us a $4.4 billion served available market. Our target market is athlete or any athletes in high sweat sports, such as football, hockey, triathlon, or marathon. In the U.S., there are 4.2 million high sweat athletes for a total market of $1.1 billion. The execution of our go-to-market strategy consists of multiple stages over the next three plus years. In the first stage, we will use toll manufacturing to produce MVP products to be sold to Precision Hydration with an agreement in place to sell our MVP to the Washington football team and their 2021 NFL training camp. By Q1 of 2022, we fully anticipate migrating away from our MVP to a full product offering of the RuSense OSP band. We have a commitment of 45,000 units from Precision Hydration, which represents a substantial customer opportunity of $4.5 million in 2022. In the third stage, we will expand our customer base to other hydration supplement companies and explore licensing opportunities. All right, judges, questions? What do you expect to sell the device for? Right, so we're using uh, the Razor Razor Blade model. So the electronics and the garment would be $100 uh, and the reusable patches will sell for a pack of 10 for $25 a piece. Then what was the 250 that you mentioned on that one slide? That's the, the lifetime value of our customer. So we're estimating that uh, we'll get about 40% customer retention. Um, and so they'll be buying one packet of sensors per year. All right, and my last question is, um, the the sensor we saw briefly is yes. it the size of a quarter or and do you it sell is, it's about average? a centimeter by a centimeter um and it, it 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 integrates into the reusable clothing using snaps uh so metallic snaps are used um and it's snapped into the clothing and then after you uh exercise you would remove that piece and and uh dispose of your your sensor and then the next you can wash the garment um as normal I just have one question. Uh, what does $5,000 do to move the ball forward? Right, so $5,000 would help us to finish our app. 
Um, our app is almost finished. Uh, we need to uh, take it from a single use app to an app that has um, a database or a, a screen that a person on a football team, for example, would be able to monitor uh, the results from multiple athletes at one time. Uh, my only question is the garments that you just mentioned. Are, are the garments yeah. from you or are the garments um, provided by the buyer, like the customer? Uh, so that would depend. Um, initially, the garment will be provided by us. Um, but if we start working with uh, professional sports teams, then they will have and they want it to be integrated somewhere into their gear, uh, then they will have to provide those garments to us. Excellent. Uh, my other question is, uh, You've already invested three hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars into the business. Um, any part of what you said that you would use the five thousand dollars for? Have you already started working on that? Yes, yes. So we've already started okay. working on the app. Um, it's it's mostly complete. Like I said, we just need to um, expand it so that it can be used for someone to look at multiple athletes at one time. Okay. Right now it's a single use. So you would get your personal results, um, which won't work if we're in a team setting. Perfect, okay, got it. So that's to, the 5,000 will be used to expand that. Correct, yes. Okay, and would it with $5,000 be enough? Yes, yes, because of how close we are to it being done, yes. Okay, so questions I have. Okay, I think that puts it at about three minutes. All right. Um, so we are ready for number two, and that is Carl Heinz Shofalvi, the CTO of Provi Technologies, LLC. Yes, good morning. I'm here to talk to you about sports injuries. The opportunity and the problem kind of all go in one. The problem has been that sports is becoming faster, our population is becoming more active, and the equipment to help people play sports or move in our society isn't sufficient to really prevent serious injuries like concussions and breaks and bruises and strains. So Pro-V was created in 2011 to try to address that, but it was on a slow drip. I had a full-time job and my investors knew that. And so our goal was to try to slowly create a technology and then bring it into the market. And we had identified um, quite a few market opportunities that we'll talk about later. But the investor group decided to focus on the NFL. The solution is really a hybrid of material science. I am a material scientist and the thought was, could we bring a polymer foam together with a ceramic constrained sphere, a hollow sphere, where that sphere would break when the impact occurred in the foam and absorb more of the energy? Well, the good news, the great news really, was that we managed by 2016 to achieve that. We had started the development work at, the, um, at Columbia University in New York City and then transferred it when I transferred back to Ohio to the University of Akron and Dr. Binyenda Mechanical Engineering Lab. And we really made progress on gathering high speed data on the impact and showed versus um, our competition, um, which were just plain polyurethane foam um, it pads that we had about 78% impact absorption versus the highest standard, which was one of the um, materials that were used in the um, Rydell helmets, and that was at 65%. So we had uh, measurable um, through data, and we have those data, 13% um, better impact absorption. However, um, when, because we only focused on the NFL and that NFL grant, we applied three times and did not get it in 2016, 17, and 18. The pushback was that it was too heavy. In other words, because we were putting in these, even though they were hollow, the ceramic balls, they were keen on finding solutions that had lower density. 
because we didn't want to, you know, add to the helmets. And I urged my investors to look at other markets. We had inquiries in the equestrian field. We had inquiries from Bauer Youth Hockey in Canada, but they wanted only to focus on the NFL. And the only measurement for our success was whether or not we got that grant. So in 2018, they pulled out at the end of 18. And then I took over in uh, early 19 and I bought them out. But it was much harder to get new funding than I thought. And I started to focus more on my real job. And through that, I realized after seeing what the competition was doing and how little impact it really had on the problem. Um, there are some rule changes, but concussions continue. However, we really need to look, uh, you think about chest protectors for catchers in baseball. Think about everywhere that there is a pad that our technology could replace it and improve that impact mitigation. This is all about reducing that impact, absorbing that energy. So midway last year, I had a Eureka of how to make it the similar technology with two different structures working together to be less dense. However, I didn't have the money to finish the work at the University of Akron, Dr. Binyenda's lab, then file the new patent, collect the data, and then start on a new pitch, really, to take it to the next level of investment. Either prize, the 2,500 or the 5,000 would do, it, to, to, to do that initial study and to finish the data and to write the patent and to pay for it. Our attorneys are runner auto. Judges, any questions? If I understand correctly, uh, your material, once it absorbs an impact, uh, it's a one use only material, right? Not the new one. The new one is renewable to about, we estimate 1500 to 2000 hits. Okay. And the old one was like a hundred. Okay. So it would, it would last for at least a season, even with the old technology. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're so low cost relatively, though, that they can be replaced in the field. But we improved that a hundredfold with, we not only made it lighter in weight, but also much, much longer lasting and not friable. Okay. And that leads to my next question. Uh, what's the cost of, uh, say, a helmet with this material in it versus a helmet with the re regular technology? Um, when we did all of the cost projections, you're looking at around $5. So um, with the ceramic technology, it was around $15. So we not only made it less dense, longer lasting, but we made it lower cost with this Eureka. Now, if I can just generate the data and file the patent, we can take it to the next step. Okay. Are you filing the patent through the university? No, no, they, we're own the, we own them completely. We have an agreement with them. It's offline. They don't own any part of it. And we already have two patents issued on the ceramic polymer foam, but this would be a serious improvement. And it also addresses the NFL's major concern of density and weight. Okay. So you're self-filing the patent then? Yes, under Pro-V Technologies, correct. Okay. Any other questions? How much uh, bigger does it make the helmet? Or do you, do you have there on your desk what the product looks like? I mean, is I it don't. thin? Is it thick? Is it uh, bubble wrap? I have one somewhere. They're mostly at the University of Akron still. Um, it looks like a regular foam and it's no long, it's no thicker or thinner than the other foam is. And now it's actually lighter in weight than the polyurethane foam it's re replacing because the hollow spheres take up, they're naturally less dense because there's so much air. We use air as a component in a sense in the impact mitigation. So it's the same size, the same weight, or it's a little bit lighter, I should say, but it's the same size. Okay, thank you. 
So are helmets the only use for your invention? No. And that was one of the problems with the other. I mean, I, I understand the motivation to go for helmets because concussions were such a big issue and still are. Yes. And there was a lot of funding dollars there, but anywhere where there's padding mm -hmm. in the chest protectors in um, baseball, knee protection, in cars, imagine everywhere that you could possibly have impact, bicycle helmets, bicycles, all of the pedestrian walkways that sometimes where people fall or slip, this could go into so many different technologies now and different applications beyond just sports. Yeah, I noticed you had um, something about uh, artificial turf. Um, so in other words, the materials can be manipulated so that it can fit into those different items that you just named, correct? The foam is pourable. And oh. so we could pour it into any shape, any mold, and then it expands into that shape. Got it. Okay. We, we, control the, yeah, we control the expansion to around 10 or 15%. Wow. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Number three, we are on Craig Waters, the CMO of Tracer. Hello, my name is Craig Waters and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Tracer. This is the story of Luke, an 89 year old veteran presenting with a history of falls, contusions on his arms and face, who improved his mobility and stopped himself from falling. It is the story of Tua, an elite college quarterback suffering a career threatening setback, coming back from a high ankle injury and surgery to win the national championship game and get drafted fifth overall in the NFL. Nothing gets us more excited than stories like Luke seen above, who after three weeks using Tracer graduated from Walker to Kane, increased his mobility by several hundred percent and actually stopped himself from falling twice because he recognized it was happening. At Alabama, Tua suffered a high ankle sprain in the 2018-19 season, and Jeff Allen, director of sports medicine, used Tracer as an integral part of the rehab process and tracking of progression to assure Coach Saban that he was ready for action in the national championship game. What do they have in common? The mind and body working together creates amazing results. Connecting your brain and body with interactive games and tests. Why is there no physical activity in today's health physical? Fraser is a holistic technology used to rehabilitate, prevent falls, and improve sport performance. Fraser Reports provide you, your clinician, your physical therapist, or athletic trainer objective data to make decisions on your health and performance over time. Measure what matters to change your game. Take the Tracer Challenge. Confidence. Growth. Connected by Tracer. One of the senior population's biggest fear is falling and loss of independence. Falls result in over 800,000 hospitalizations and 27,000 deaths in the U.S. annually. Working with Motion PT Group, Tracer was introduced as a solution to changing the lives of seniors and making a huge impact in falls reductions. In a census of 2000, they have shown an over 30% reduction in falls with a healthcare cost impact of 3.5 million annually per community. Tracer brings assessment, mitigation, and engaging results into this space that doesn't exist today. Orthopedic injuries result in $162 billion in annual health care cost. Reinjury rates from surgery and rehabilitation are typically 25 to 30 percent. Tracer is able to reduce reinjury rates by four to five times that norm. What do Alabama, Clemson, the Olympic Training Center, our military forces, Ascension and Select Medical all have in common? They are some of the best who use the disruptive cutting edge technology to drive optimal performance and outcomes. Tracer has achieved validation and major traction in three huge markets, physical therapy, athletics, and senior health, along with entrees into the military and fitness realms. 
these markets represent a $4 billion total addressable market in the U.S. alone. To scale to large enterprise partners, the blitz scaling phase will focus on jumpstarting sales and integration of the education process, all while continuing to develop the technology by adding additional key features like telehealth, EMR, education, and data norms. The business model is a SaaS monthly or yearly billing of $650 per month or $7,800 per year. As we move forward, there will be new revenue streams tied to data, education, accessories, and more. With our existing clients, we're poised for strategic growth. Over 85 subscriptions are in organizations with well over 6,000 opportunities for a $50 million annual run rate. In the game of life or sports, you take winning game plans and execute on them over and over again to win championships. Tracer takes the winning case studies and strategies for existing markets and expands upon them. The Tracer family is made up of many people like you see here and beyond, and our mission is to become a vital technology for healthcare and everyone. It is the story of Camilla coming back from a car accident on the way to her wedding, recovering from a severe concussion and knee injury and making it to the altar to marry her soulmate. It is about William, NFL and collegiate All-American suffering from ALS, keeping moving. And is a story of Byron trying to improve his performance and attain the scholarship he has always dreamed of. Measuring what matters for everyone, Tracer. All right, questions? So the product or the intellectual property is software as a service? It's software as a service. The technology is centered around the mind and body connections and measuring that. So what's the IP? The IP is centered around measuring how the mind and the body work together. We measure reaction time, gate speed, acceleration, deceleration in multiple directions. And the, the, you know, the patents are all centered around that mind body connection. Okay. Is there a physical device other than, or is it just software? No, today there's the hardware, that box that you see that's under, that sits under the screen that costs us about $1,800 today. Uh, we're lowering that cost down to $1,200, which is our next iteration in January. And then we think within two years, we'll be able to um, keep the software in the cloud and be able to drop it onto any device once the cameras get sophisticated enough, we'll be able to drop it onto an iPad or a phone or through TVs um, in the home. Okay. Craig, these um, uh, Alabama and some of those other uh, beta sites, have they, have you generated uh, revenue from those site from those customers or the army? What is your uh, revenue uh, tracking right now? Sure, our revenue run rate is five hundred thousand currently, which is double from last year. Everybody, all the people you saw on there are paying customers during this phase, but it's been a very much a validation phase. Over, we launched in two thousand seventeen into the market. And we've been validating in those three primary markets. Um, now we're trying. Now we're really ready to scale to the next level. And when you get a new customer, you sell them that box for eighteen hundred. No, we sell. No, we did not. We put them on a subscription for six hundred and fifty dollars a month. So you know, we we have a upfront cash cost on the box today. Um, that we recover over the first three months. We've had an attrition rate under 5% in the first three years. So, you know, our customer base has slowly grown from 19 in the first year to over 87 customers today, locations where they're, we're in today. So, so a patient in the nursing home, the nursing home would subscribe and then their physical therapist would be taking them through a a routine being watched by your box or? Um, well, sort of the, you know, the physical therapy group would basically administer the technology in a senior living center for those clients. Um, so they were putting them through workouts, um, you know, for both physical therapy exercises as well as movement exercises in those, in those locations. 
Okay, thanks. Sure. I only have one question. Would that only be useful for someone that is mobile? So in other words, is there in a wheelchair, could it help strengthen them in any kind of way as well? Or do they really, do they need to be mobile, like able to walk? Um, no, they do not. Um, we have we have video of people, wheelchair athletes. We worked with the wounded warriors out in Chicago and the nice. Invictus Games. We've worked with amputees. Um, the gentleman Luke had a walker and when he they do not it's pretty empowering because they don't see themselves with the walker in the screen through the avatar so you know they're seeing themselves you know walking upright um so really any any age any population any surface we've done it with hockey players on the ice we worked on turf it's portable because we can bring it out into the field it's not just on a wall and it's really about you know getting better results because you're connecting the mind with the activities. Everything is reaction based, so you're following where your next target is, and because your mind's engaged, you get better results. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next, we have Trent Baldoff, Have a Hive. He's a director of Have a Hive Inc. I want for you to try and imagine a world with no color, no fruits, no vegetables, no flowers. That's what life would look like without bees, especially without our honeybees. You see, in our life on Earth, 390,000, over 390,000 species of plants have flowers. 90% of those 390,000 plants require, they absolutely need, to be pollinated by insects like bees. And not to mention, pollinators such as honeybees are responsible for one third of all of the food production in the entire globe. These little insects. Some people don't realize how much we truly depend on them. And some people don't realize how much of a battle they're up against because of us spraying pesticides or global warming or even their own mites and diseases. Have a Hive is here to help give these pollinators a fighting chance. Hello everyone. My name is Trent Baldiff and I'm here to present Have a Hive, where saving bees is made easy. With the problem being that pollinators like honeybees are dying out at an astonishing rate, a viable solution to such a problem is Have a Hive. You see, Have a Hive is a nonprofit program where individuals and organizations can sponsor beehives. Now, what's amazing really is that once they sponsor that beehive, they not only place it locally to the sponsor, but they contract, Have a Hive contracts with a beekeeper to maintain that hive. And at the end of the year, the sponsor themselves gets an incentive package that's full of the all natural raw honey that they made possible and the beekeeper gets sent beekeeping equipment as a thank you for maintaining this colony. Now what's really cool is our application. We have a mobile application that allows the sponsor on the front end to virtually interact with the colony that they've sponsored. While on the back end, the beekeeper is actually taking notes and photos and uploading them to the app for the sponsor to be able to see. Now because of our application and because of the business model, we have been described as the Uber for beekeepers and the Airbnb for beehives. We can set these beehives everywhere and anywhere. And then the local beekeeper comes and maintains them. So how does Have a Hive sustain itself? Essentially, it's through a subscription-based sponsorship model where individuals can sponsor beehives, beekeepers, or hive parks for a monthly recurring revenue fee. On the other hand, have a hive being that it can accept tax deductible donations, approaches corporations and local businesses asking anywhere from $5,000 to $10 million. See, if we wanna have sponsored beehives, we have to have beekeepers that are willing to help us out. In the United States, there are roughly 212,000 beekeepers in all 50 states. If have a hive is able to attain just 1% of that market, 
we will be able to have a beekeeper for every county in every state in the United States, roughly every county. Not to mention in 2019, there were nearly $450 billion given in charitable causes. Being that Have a Hive is a nonprofit, all of the money that comes in is indeed a charitable cause. If we're able to attain just a half of a percent of that charitable money that was received in 2019, Have a Hive will be able to encompass just over $2 billion. Now what's really interesting is our business model. It's a subscription-based sponsorship model. You see, individuals and organizations can sponsor beehives, beekeepers, or hive parks. For $7.99 a month, they can sponsor a hive park for $24.99 a month, or they can outright sponsor a bee, beekeeper, I'm sorry, for $99 at a flat rate. People and individuals, organizations, become more aware of the the footprint that they leave behind, all because they're starting to pay a little bit more attention to the little insects that we so heavily depend upon, is providing educational awareness and opportunities for bees to flourish so that everybody can come together like a colony of bees and work to help save these pollinators. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. What is the who pays for the the beehive? Where where does that all come from? What is interesting is that when let's say somebody in Akron wants to sponsor a beehive, we reach out to beekeepers that we are in contact with in the Akron area and take their existing beehive and use that as a sponsored beehive. So the beehive is already paid for and has a working colony within it. The incentive for a beekeeper to allow their beehive to be sponsored is that they then get beekeeping equipment in return at the end of the year, so long as they continue to upload the notes and photos into the application that they can download. And the reason that we decided to reward the beekeepers themselves with the beekeeping equipment is because that's the most expensive part of that backyard hobby. and. Let me tell you folks that I, I am always ecstatic when I get free equipment from my mentors and things of that nature. And if I were to be given free equipment just by keeping my own bees, I think that's a win-win situation. But how, how does a, say a family uh, or, or Hudson Library wants one up on their roof? How mm -hmm. does that all go down? Or in their it's, backyard or you know somebody's backyard? Yes, it's a very similar process. So we do have a host a hive option that I did not mention in the video just because uh, it's um, five minute limit on the explanation. But there is that option available on the website. And essentially it is initial consultation of a survey where they might want the, uh, the beehive to be. And then it's an initial inspection where somebody is physically on site determining whether or not that place is able to host a colony of bees. It's not... Um, a free-for-all. We need to make sure that the pollinators are being taken care of more so than um, the individual desires. But in the end of the day, we do every, we do do everything to put that pollinator or that beehive on that individual organization's property. All right. One last question: Is mm -hmm. it true there's uh, there's pollinator bees and then honeybees, or are they isn't there two types of bees? Um, so there are stinging insects that don't pollinate that also fly around and then there are stinging insects that do pollinate and um so honeybees are your most popular pollinators i would say that they are the insects that typically get the most work done so to speak but they are just as important as your bumblebee they're just as important as your hummingbirds and dragonflies but the reason that I choose honeybees as the uh, the focal point of the sponsorship program is because of the fact that I'm a big believer that everybody should begin to think like a honeybee. Um, how else can you have 10,000 stinging insects working together without problems? I think that society could learn a lot from the way that they work together. And that's why I chose honeybees. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, with respect to customer discovery. What kind of uh, customer discovery have you done to establish that people will be willing to sponsor beehives? 
and walk into these sponsorship roles? So as of right now, we've done two years of customer acquisition research. Part of that uh, research being done was through the Akron i program, where we were able to inter interview uh, dozens of individuals and to see what kind of demographics and psychographics are most uh, likely to sponsor beehives. And we have found that it's a, it's, a, um, it's a wide age range from about 35 to 55, typically Caucasian women that are earning anywhere from 35 to $70,000 a year. And especially individuals who are in a family setting, not individuals who are single, so to speak. Um, and we think that part of that is because of their, uh, the fear of leaving behind a world that is desolate without bees. Um, other than that, we found that organizations in terms of, so that that was the individual sponsorship, but an organizational sponsorship are in, uh, typically in organizations that have missions and values similar to ours. Our missions are bees, benevolent environmentalists encouraging sustainability. So if there's an organization out there that is looking to reduce their emissions or even have a more coherent team building exercise by being able to go visit those bees. Um, organizations that are open to making nature and their own like social environment better are the organizations that we've been able to target. And some of those include restaurants. Some of those have included executive offices. It's um, been interesting to see the diversity that we've been able to come up with as far as sponsorships. But one thing's for sure, we, can, we have no shortage of people who are love with bees, thankfully. How much of your customer discovery involves customers outside the state of Ohio? As of right now, we have customer discovery out in Indiana, Colorado, California, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. And as much as we would have liked to have more in-person, in-depth conversation with those individuals, it was kind of a passing through for a business trip. Um, where we just weren't able to spend as much time really digging into why they thought and felt the way that they did. But ultimately we are posed to scale this operation into these, those other states that I had mentioned just because of the, uh, the beekeeper network that I've been able to amass. Um, it's funny, we're all pretty quirky folks. We get along pretty well, whether or not we're in the same state or not. And one last question for you. What does the $5,000 do to move you forward? The $5,000 would be substantial in moving me forward because as of right now, there has been absolutely zero online advertising or marketing. The website is ready and it can handle the traffic that I believe is going to be coming through. But to be able to take some of that $5,000 and put it into sponsored ad pages on Facebook and Instagram, which we have a good following on each of those platforms, I think would be extraordinarily beneficial. But what is gonna be most important of the use of the $5,000 is going to be taking that, that revenue and actually redeveloping our app. So as of right now, our app is um, from a, an organization called Glide. You cannot find our app on the App Store. You have to have a special link for it, which I do enjoy. But at the same time, I want to be able to have it downloadable on both the Google Play Store and the Apple Store. So that is um, going to require to pay somebody to develop the app for us. And I also want there to be a map that pops up on the individual's phone that shows not only where they're sponsored beekeepers, beehives, but also hive parks. And I, I did not go into very much detail as to what hive parks are during the presentation, again, because of the five minute limit, but we do have um, an urban farm set up in Cleveland, which is the first hive park. And a hive park is essentially a combination of urban agriculture and urban beekeeping for the purpose of education, economic stimulus and environmental sustainability. All right, well, we have a few more, um or we're running out of time. I just wanna make sure all the judges have been able to ask questions. Did anyone else have anything? You're good. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. You. All right. Um, David Davis, the president of the Food Stretcher Plus. All right, begin. The Food Stretcher Plus, promoting more food brands while stretching the dollars of the low-income shopper. We focus on two low-income groups. Group one is the government-subsidized shopper, those on SNAP, 
the former food stamp program, WIC and unemployment. Group two is the low to moderate income shopper. This shopper has low income, but they're not on government assistance. The problem is that low income shoppers are difficult for consumer packaged good brands to reach using traditional coupon marketing methods. The number one coupon distribution method is still the Sunday newspaper where 90% of all coupons are distributed. Low income shoppers as a group, they do not purchase the Sunday newspaper. Therefore, they are not receiving 90% of the coupons that's distributed or the savings associated with those coupons. The solution is the Food Stretcher Plus. It's an electronic coupon platform. It's a bridge, a conduit for the low income shopper. We assist them in purchasing more food from their existing budget. We're also a marketing segmentation tool for consumer packaged good brands who now can reach shoppers that traditional coupon methods have failed to reach. You see, low income shoppers, they represent over $60 billion nationally and over $2 billion in Ohio alone. The Food Stretcher Plus is like adding money to their food budget. Electronic food coupons are sent directly to their smartphone via the Food Stretcher Plus mobile app. In Cuyahoga County, Ohio, SNAP recipients receive $128 a month per person or $4.26 a day to feed themselves. A shopper who purchased 20 Food Stretcher Plus items with a $1 discount, that's $20 savings or 16% of their food budget. They now can purchase an additional 4.5 days of food, $20 savings from the coupons divided by 426 per day is 4.5 additional days. An additional benefit is our United States patent fresh fruits and vegetables conversion method. This patent allow us to take the coupon value from product A and apply it to product B. The shopper pays full price for product A, but product B, that's our fresh fruits and vegetable. It is paid for by the coupon value of product B. This slide shows the impact of our patented fresh fruits and vegetable conversion method without exhausting the budget of the low income shopper. Look at all the fresh fruits and vegetables that we're going to be able to provide to this group. Our program is executed by an electronic and paper distribution method. The electronics are our mobile app, website, POS integration, and digital fence. Our mission is to have this shopper download the Food Stretcher Plus a mobile app. We have a barcode that serves as our unique identifier. It captures the transaction data at POS. Our paper flyers distribute the program offers to the many community organizations, food bank, churches, and the like. Pew Research did a study that shows that those who make less than $30,000, 71% of those have a smartphone. And that's why we use the digital fence. The digital fence is a direct mobile advertising method using GPS technology. A digital fence is placed over strategic locations like government housing projects, check cashing locations for the unbanked, participating super supermarkets, food banks, etc. Our advertisements to download our mobile app is viewed on a smartphone when at these locations. See, there are organizations who see the value of this shopper, but they have their own strategies. But the competition, it validates our opportunity. The Food Stretcher Plus is creating culture for the low income grocery shopper. Okay, any questions? Two, the first one, 
Uh, you talk about integrating into point of sale systems. Have you gotten grocer buy into that, or you know, what grocery stores have you talked to that said, "Yeah, we can do that." Well, yes, uh, we have uh, some grocery stores in the city of Cleveland, Simon Stores. We have uh, uh, Sparkle uh, Stores in Youngstown. And we have a, uh, an agreement with the Ohio Grocers Association, the largest grocers association in Ohio. They like our program and they want to in, uh, introduce their membership of over 400 stores to this program. Uh, we uh, entered into that uh, 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 arrangement with them. Okay, and you've heard me ask this question to several of the contestants or participants. What does 5,000 do for you? Well, it, um, it helps, um, uh, helps us continue to go and creating the infrastructure for our um, proof of concept, our pilot. We're in the midst of creating a pilot program and uh, what it would do, it would uh, um, help us uh, with uh, updating our website and our app, and uh, you know, when you have a, a when you have a, a patent, you have uh, patent maintenance fees, and we're up for that as well. And um, so, but uh, basically, the vast majority of it is now that we have the infrastructure in place. Now we can go after our customer, the CPG manufacturer, uh, and working with the Ohio Grocers Association, cause. Many of their the membership, in which we are a membership as well, and that would pay for some of the membership fees that's involved with that. Um, uh, some of the OGA memberships, um, they're, they're the manufacturers as well as retailers. So we'll spend uh, much of that money going towards uh, getting the retailers and the manufacturers. We also have the uh, community development councils. Uh, they see uh, around each of our uh, pilot stores, there's community de uh, development organizations, and they see a great benefit for their constituency because many of them are low income shoppers and they want to make sure that they even do a pre pilot download of our app that we would use that data to tell the retailers and the brands that we have a ready and willing shopper even as, as we uh, do the uh, uh, pilot. Okay, thank you. My, my question is, um, is the QPAC coupons electronic so that it would be on their smartphones when they arrive? Yeah, the on, they'll, they'll download our mobile app and um, our mobile app has all the participating brands and products that's going to be available for that month. But the beauty behind it is that with for the manufacturer, uh, see right now, the uh, FSIs, the freestanding inserts, that's 90% of the uh, coupons that's distributed. But in the Sunday newspaper, if you find a Coca-Cola app, you're gonna find a Pepsi. If you find a Cheerios, you should find a Corn Flakes. But with us, we have what we call category exclusivity. That's, that, and that's beneficial for the manufacturer because they're gonna be the only of that brand to be there. So if there's a Cheerios, there won't be a Corn Flakes. If there is, a, so you have that category exclusivity. Oh, I like that. Um, and you also mentioned um, the availability of uh, access to more fruits and vegetables. And I, I think I understand it, stood it where the coupon that I have for my Coca-Cola, th that if it was a 50 cents coupon, it would go towards the vegetables. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because in that description, I kind of misspoke, okay? What I meant by that is that I said that um, item A could, could be Clorox or Coca-Cola, that coupon value will go to vi uh, coup uh, uh, product B, which is the fresh fruits and vegetables. Now, the consumer would pay full price for product A and the coupon value would go towards product B. I think in in the description there, I said product B would be paid for by the coupons of product B, but in actuality, product A would pay for the product and product B. So okay. see, see the, the uh, Center of Disease Control, they had a study about uh, fresh fruits and vegetables in this low income area and much of the chronic uh, 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 issues with diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, and things like that, it can be managed and controlled with a better, um, a diet of fresh fruits and vegetables. 
but because they're so expensive, uh, the low income shopper, that's why you see so many processed foods in the low income area because fresh fruits and vegetables cost more. But with this patented process that they can be able to use the coupon value for one product to buy fresh fruits and vegetables. That was one of the problems with that study is that they saw that the benefits of it, but they couldn't afford it. You know, they gave in, in, in the study, they gave them vouchers of like $40 a month, but they couldn't continue to do that. So that was the pushback of, of saying, well, it's, it's a good idea, but we can't afford to do this. So we, we came up with a method whereas they could afford it. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. Have you, uh, have you done any proto prototypes with people uh, using their, this, your software and? Well, see the thing, we, on our management team, we have a gentleman that create, uh, that, that works with the POS system. And it's, uh, most POS systems have something that they call bundles. So if you can take one product, you can bundle it together. Most POS systems have that software already there. So we, we didn't have to create any software. We just have to use the current technology. Um, and and, and uh, that is, um, we have a unique identifier that we would download at, as our barcode and that would identify that shopper as a Food Stretcher Plus shopper. And then all of our promotions would be downloaded underneath that barcode. It becomes live once that barcode is, is scanned. Have grocery stores um, endorsed this product? Well, we have some, yeah. Matter of fact, as I mentioned, the Ohio Grocers Association, uh, Christian Mullins, geez, that, they're, they're the largest organization. If you look at their website, you'll see uh, as a, and we're, we're a member of the OGA as well, um, we're, we're one of their uh, partners there and they have our information on their website and they're the largest organization here in Ohio and they want to uh, 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 utilize this as a, uh, a benefit for their retailers because many of the independent retailers, it's, 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 an ex it's expensive for the retailers to have their own loyalty program. And basically, this is what this is. And, uh, but this way, it's no cost to the retailers. Retailers are embracing this because they're having to um, compete against big box stores like uh, the dollar stores and the Walmarts of the world. So this is something to help because they're eroding their market share. And our targeted market right now for the retailers are the independent grocers. Uh, so they're, they're, it's, they're the easiest one to embrace this because they see that not only is this shopper is gonna save money, but it's gonna increase traffic for them for products that's not on sale. Cause if you create traffic, it's just like people having lost leaders and things like that, it's, it's designed to bring uh, uh, shoppers in there and maybe buy the products that's not on sale. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Did you have one, did you have a last question? Next, Peach Thank Brown you. with the owner and inventor of Sledge Scarves. Oh my God, I am so tired of my headscarf falling off my head in the middle of the night. I spent 10 hours trying to get this hairstyle perfect after watching that YouTube hair tutorial video a hundred times. Now my hair is dried out, messed up, and is that a bald patch I see? There's gotta be some kind of scarf out there that actually doesn't fall off in the middle of the night. Oh wait, there is, it's called the sledge scarf. I gotta tell you all about it. Made from Charmeau Satin, the sledge scarf takes care of the four most important hair care needs that keep your hair looking like it was dipped in milk and honey and kissed by the angels. It prevents hair breakage, retains moisture, promotes healthy hair growth, and wait for it, it doesn't slip off. The pack pending band along the inside of the scarf is what helps to stay on your head the entire night no matter how much you toss and turn. And to make sure that it could withstand even the most wild sleepers out there, we made sure it could withstand the pulling force of up to 15 pounds. Now tell me, have you ever seen a headscarf that could hold a 15 pound bowling ball? 
with over $2.5 billion in the natural hair care industry and competitors like Grace Leia, Etsy Small Shops, and neighborhood hair care stores, we're ready to disrupt that market by claiming 3% of those dollars. And that would be just the beginning, because over 30 million women have experienced some form of hair loss in their lifetime due to lack of moisture, and that doesn't even include the 52% of consumers who are now looking for a more natural way to care for their hair. Our revenue model is simple. We hand make the scarves for $7, sell them for $45 to natural and curly haired women on sledgegarves.com by way of social media ads and vending events to make an 84% profit margin. That 84% includes all the materials, including packaging and marketing needs. Now, don't get me wrong. This entrepreneurial journey is my obsession. And even though I've spent $10,000 of my own money to keep this dream alive, we need your help, which is why today we're asking for an investment of $100,000. This will allow us to bulk up on inventory, continue our patent process, as well as help with manufacturing and marketing needs. Sledge Guards was invented and designed by me, Peach Brown, after 25 years of waking up and finding my headscarf missing and laying somewhere at the bottom of my bed. So you see, I am my ideal customer, and I personally know the pain and the frustration that is caused from a slippery, unreliable headscarf. That madness has to stop. And it has. The solution is sledge scarves. Remember, you deserve to feel beautiful at all times of the day, no matter how much you toss and turn at night. So let sledge scarves make bedhead a thing of the past and 24-hour beauty a thing that lasts. Thank you. Questions? Your price point, what do your customers think of $45 a scarf? Are they willing to pay that? Absolutely. Within the headscarf sector, there's headscarves, there's bonnets, and they go for about $35 to $40 for just the regular scarves. I decided to price mine a little bit higher uh, just because I have the aspect that it doesn't slip off at all in the middle of the night. So when women see this, even men, when they see this, they're like, I got to get it. I'm tired of my wife complaining every night that her scarf falls off. So the price point is perfect for everybody. Well, you can see this has been quite a while since I needed to shop for a headscarf. <laughs> <laughs> the other question again, what's, what does the prize money do for you? So right now I'm in the process of finding a manufacturer. I'm actually in the process of speaking one with, with one right now. I, I just sent my NDA this morning. So the 5,000 will help me um, get samples as well as perfect the design of the scarf as well. So furthering my manufacturing process and then any money left over is going to go towards my second patent that I'm going to be working on, which is the second design for the sledge scarf. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, my question for you is um, about how many have you sold so far? Have you you manufactured them at home or you or you have a manufacturer? No, I ha I'm working on getting a manufacturer right now. I hand make them with my own fingers right now. So um, at the moment, I've sold probably about 150. And um, this is since last year, when, last year in March when I started launching. So um, I haven't been too heavy on advertising. I advertise every once in a while, um, but until I get my manufacturer, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to advertise too much because as soon as I put an ad out, I get crazy sales and my fingers start to hurt. So I'm like, let me just hold off on the ads for now. And I do what I can for now until I can get the manufacturer. It's funny because I almost inboxed you and said, can you send me four? <laughs> So, okay, well, thank you, and I do know that that is a problem. <laughs> yes. Your uh, sourcing of a manufacturer, are you going uh, offshore or in the U.S.? I'm so nervous about going offshore, so I actually was able to find a manufacturer that is in Chicago, so I'm working with her right now. That way I can actually fly there 
depending on COVID, you know, to keep an eye on the manufacturing process and, um, you know, be able to make sure that everything goes as smooth as possible. Handling things overseas is just very risky. I don't have an international patent. My patent would only be covered, of course, in the United States for right now. Um, so that is just a big risk that I don't want to take right now at this point in my company. So U.S. manufacturers is where I'm going to stay for now. And what is the uh, C and I don't use uh, hair scarfs either. Um, what is the fastening technique? Uh, so it has Velcro strips on it. Um, your traditional scarf doesn't have anything on it. It's just a, a regular piece of satin and you have to kind of maneuver it. There's also a learning curve to that. You have to learn how to put it on your head and tie it on. And let's not even talk about figuring out how to get it to stay on your head, you know, when you're sleeping. It will just come right off. With my scarf, you put it on around the front or on the back and you just boop and you put the two velcros there and it stays on your head. You don't even have to put it on super duper tight. You could put it on as loose as you want. And because of the patent pending material on the inside, it will still hold for your head. It will still hold at night, even with any kind of tossing and turning. And you can even yank on it and it's not coming off. Oh, very good, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, hey, any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, and finally, we have um, Jim Porterfield, PTMAAT, the owner designer of Core Builder Pro. The strong core is the basis for less pain, improved performance, and the foundation for a healthier and happier life. Hi, my name is Jim Porterfield. I'm a retired physical therapist, athletic trainer after 40 years of clinical practice and co-author of four textbooks on functional anatomy in a complete cadaver dissection series. 30 years ago, 20% of our work was women's health, working with OBGYN physicians and abdominal surgeons, presenting us with the challenge of how to define the structure and the function of the core or trunk and how to best rehabilitate and strengthen it. To that end, we developed a handheld spring-loaded device and method that rapidly and predictably strengthens all the muscles of the core. It's spring-loaded with two handles with variable resistance, and the core is a consolidation of many muscles that form our structure. We're happy to report that we've been awarded a U.S. patent on June 30th of 2020. It's convenient, and with proper use, only six to 10 minutes, you can strengthen the muscles of the core and enhance your overall health. Now Debbie will show us how to perform this in standing. It's down, forward, and across. Stop, right elbow over the left foot. Pull your stomach in, squeeze everything hard. Come back, switch positions. Come forward, down, across, elbow across. Pull your navel up, squeeze everything together. Push your feet into the ground. Hold, 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 and relax. So what is the problem that we're trying to solve? Low back pain? obesity, and health care costs. Low back statistics, 75 to 85% of Americans will suffer from low back pain once in their life. 90% will improve without surgery. 50% of those who have an episode will have a recurring episode within a year. Your 5.4 million workers will be disabled for one or more years from low back pain. It's estimated that 40% of all the people in the United States are obese, which is over 30 BMI, body mass index, which takes height into weight, and you can see the dark colors is where we have the greatest problem in our country. It's killing us. And healthcare costs are directly related to that. And it just needs to be worked on one person at a time. So the solution to all this may be maintain your lean body mass and maintain your ideal body weight as you age. Here's what we know. Core strength stabilizes our posture and protects the skeleton from overload. The skeleton is just like the axle on this truck with an overload and asymmetry it breaks down, the same thing happens to our skeleton as we age. So just a little anatomy lesson. The back is actually connected to the front. Here's the back with muscles hooked into fascia, which is just like canvas on the front. Here's the abdominal fascia with muscles pulling in different directions. And you can see that it's all connected. In the back, muscles are contained within it. And in the front, they're contained within this fascia. And they push and pull. It's just like building a circus tent. Muscles pull and muscles push on fascia, tightening up your trunk. It's just like Mother Nature's corset. All these muscles come together with these fascial systems and pull your abdominal contents up underneath your rib cage. 
you can go to the gym or get a ball and strengthen in your core by doing all these different exercises. Or you can use this Core Builder Pro six to 10 minutes a day. It's convenient, sequential, and simultaneous contraction of all muscles of your core. It's proven effective, durable, and it's portable and easy to use. It can be done standing, seated, or supine lying. And again, six to 10 minutes is all it takes. The key is to do this daily. So what you can expect when you use this device which rolls your pelvis back and draws your abdominal contents back up underneath your rib cage is a more stable posture, less pain in medication, improved performance, and you'll find fluid and effortless movement. So the market we see is anyone who's interested in staying healthy and active, helping pain management. We've seen so many people lose their back pain as their abdominal wall and their core becomes strong. It's very effective. But I'm continuing to do it and feeling very healthy, very strong. I feel younger because it has made a huge difference. Right. One point that I wanted to make is sometimes I think, oh, I'm tired. You know, it's been a busy day. And well, maybe I don't feel like doing this today. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, no, I'm going to do the device. After 10 minutes, you're awake again. Yeah. You're, you're alive. That's a real good point. Yes. That's a real good point. Our global thought is that the future of health and wellness is what takes place in the home. Please learn how to stay strong and take better care of yourself and become a student of nutrition. All right, judge it. So what are your current sales? Uh, we, we were about a year into this. We designed this 30 years ago and had two of them made and used them in our clinic. And when I retired, I decided it was so effective that we um, took about two and a half or three years to bring it to market. Uh, our, uh, so we're just a little over a year. We've sold uh, just a little over 100 and we probably have given 60 or 70 away to, to my colleagues. We have it in 30 different rehab centers around the country. And um, in our market uh, was segmented into two areas. The first area is the rehab market, which is obviously what the world we lived in. And then we're also looking at the health seekers and athletes and avid exercisers. So uh, we've really focused our uh, market just on the health provider at this point in time. Where is the product made? It's it's uh, we, we coordinated uh, with the fabricators and and uh, and uh, um, and uh, um, engineers down in uh, in Florida, and we have it made in China. And and, and just I might say, I interviewed six different uh, manufacturing companies in the Akron and Cleveland area over the last two years, and no nobody wanted really the business. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, my question is, again, if you win the prize, how does it help you? Well, it would help us a lot to continue our work toward uh, going over into the performance enhancement market. We're, we're presently involved in uh, looking at radio and TV advertisements. So that's how we, we would use it, just to bolster our sales. And eventually, we hope it all balances out. And there's a huge market for it. And everybody that's using it on a proper basis has is, is, uh, is improved. We have testimonies on our website, corebuilderpro.org. And um, I think it speaks to the effectiveness of it. If I might, if you want to go into a physical therapy department, the first thing they're interested in is pain management. And once you go through the pain management component of it, then it's all going toward strengthening the trunk and improving the coordination of your neuromuscular system and decreasing the chances of falls and injury. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, and my question is, um, how do you, uh, there's a lot of different um, equipment out there for core, mm -hmm. to work the core. Um, how do you feel um, you rank or rate up against other competitors? Well, what I, makes you think, better? What makes this better than other equipment? Well, what, what makes this better is it does actually sequentially and simultaneously contract all the muscles at the core. The, the key to rapid and predictable results is twofold. One is that learning how to use it so that you can actually engage all those muscles that tie into the core. And the second thing is daily use. 
I mean, right. go to the gym. You can go to the gym a couple of days a week. That's fine. Don't stop that. But what are you going to do on the other other days? So we have people that um, that have it in their kitchen. A good friend of mine does all the cooking for the family, so he has it in the kitchen. He uses it every day. I have a, a person that has it on a chair in plain sight that's between the kitchen and the chair that they're going to go sit into to watch TV. And we also have people that have it in, in their bedrooms and also in the chair they're going to sit into. So picking it up and using how to do it for 10, 6, 10, 12 minutes, if you do that every day, we can show you in the nervous system why we can make a statement by rapid and predictable results. If you do this six to 10 minutes a day for a week, you'll see changes in your neuromuscular system. Okay, well, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. How much do these, again, how much does it cost? Well, we have them on the market for 240, and, um, and right now we're selling them on Amazon for 149 until we get five reviews. But we say other than spending money to eat the best food you can buy, this is the second best investment in your health because it's convenient and you can do it at home. You don't have to change your clothes. You don't have to buy memberships. It's just very effective. And we like it. We would like to liken it to developing a good habit, just like brushing your teeth. Right. That's perfect for COVID since most Thank people you. are working from home. <laughs> you bet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, was there any other questions? All right, well, I just want to, that was our last pitch. I just wanna thank all of our finalists. Um, and now I'm going to have the judges go into their private Zoom meeting room to confer. We are going to give them about 15 minutes to start. Hopefully they can come to a decision at that point. Um, so we will meet back here, I guess, a little bit after eight o'clock. So if everyone wants to, um, you know, stretch your legs, do whatever, and plan on coming back at eight o'clock, and we'll we'll let you know what the judges' progress is um, at that point. All right. See you, everybody. Thank you. the judges to come back in and I believe they have made a decision. Okay. It took longer than, than we thought it always does. It must've been a tough one. It was. Okay. Um, are Jim, I just see you on the video. Are you doing, Oh, I don't have Rick in here yet. We'll wait. He's on his way. Rick, Rick will give you the results. What's that? Rick will give you the results. Okay. Um, are all of my finalists in the room? Do you guys want to turn on your cameras? Three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, they're all there. <clears throat> Thank you all so much for participating in this year's pitch competition. Um, it was really fun. Um, it's one of my, I always love seeing the ideas that come out of this. It just is very inspiring. So thank you all. Thank you to the judges, especially for taking the time out of your schedules um, to judge this competition. Um, if you are a winner, just stick. Actually, I think you're okay. We will follow up tomorrow with an email about further instructions. Um, so look for that. Um, but congratulations to all of you. Okay, I lost the room. <laughs> All right, do we have, Rick, I, I was told you were gonna announce the winners. Yes, I was. Um, the winner um, has a drum roll stopped. <laughs> <laughs> is the hair scarf. Ooh, congratulations. Congratulations, Pete. Is that, that's first place? Yep. Okay. And then the other two runner-ups um, was the have a hive. And the other runner-up um, 
I'm sorry, I don't have the full, uh, the Rue product. Rue Yes. Okay, so in first place, I'll just go over. We have Peach Brown, the owner and inventor of Sledge Scarves. And the two runners up are Chelsea Monty, CEO and founder of Rue Sense, and Trent Baldoff, executive director of Have a Hive, Inc. Congratulations. Congratulations to everybody. Thank you for participating. Um, we loved hearing from all of you. Um, and thank you for you know, trusting us in our first uh, virtual <laughs> pitch competition. I hope everyone continues to be well um, and we'll see you soon. Thanks everyone. Can we just do one quick snap of a photo for, um, for our finalists? If everyone, Kelsey, is there a way to take a photo, I think? Yeah, we can do a screenshot. Give right. me one second. Let me pull my up. Okay. Turn off my video. All right. We'll take a screenshot now. Oh, that looked <laughs> awful, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't use this one at all. So let's try it one more time. Okay, everyone. Smile and then hold it for a few seconds, please. Okay, so. Three, two, one, smile. That's better. We're going to go with that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. So thank you, everyone. Thank Have you. a good night. Congratulations. Congratulations, Ashley. That's awesome. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.